Hey, my name is Jared Moon, and I'm part of a group of underground athletes you've probably never even heard of before. We don't rely on fancy equipment for training, and most of us don't even have gym memberships. In fact, our motivation comes from within. You see, we have jobs, families, and responsibilities, but we still have big goals, and they aren't getting achieved at a global gym. For that reason, we have to do things differently. Our training has to be smarter. We don't have every piece of equipment known to man or a ton of time to train, and we don't need it because we are achieving amazing things without it. So how do we do it? If you ask your average personal trainer or gym goer, they'd call us crazy. Yet we're seeing results better than most every single day. And it's happening by blending mental training with physical training and becoming an athlete. What we call, and welcome to, Garage Gym Athlete. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. Jared Moon here, and with me is Joe. What's up, Joe? Howdy. And then we have Luke McLedowney. How's it going, Luke? That's right. How's it going? Uh, it's going well, man. So, before we hop into anything at all, let's get an introdu introduction of who you are, what you do for a living, and how you train. Sure. So, uh, you know, just the basics, I'll try and keep it short. I uh, grew up in northern Wisconsin. I was, spent a lot of time just trying to figure life out. Went to college for a little bit. Did military. I was active for a while. And now I live in Oregon. So I, I've just finished up my bachelor's degree. And I'm working on my master's degree in sport and performance psychology. And right now I'm working at Lynn Benton Community College as a career and advising support specialist. Uh, as far as my training, you know, I've been an athlete, like traditional sport athlete all my life. So I'm definitely a little bit more focused on, on that kind of stuff with conditioning and plyometrics, that sort of thing. Um, but I, I really enjoy the, like some of the CrossFit style conditioning. Mm -hmm. So I, I definitely try to incorporate that in there too. Um, so, you know, it's a lot of, a lot of heavy lifting and then some, random wads when I feel like it and then just the basic uh running and plyometrics type stuff awesome so sports psychology uh did you check out the I believe uh Brett McCabe podcast um I've definitely heard it I I listen to basically all of them and I, there's some other podcasts that I listen to so they sort of all blur together yeah they do right? but <laughs> yeah no I definitely I remember that one that was one of my favorites. So yeah. if you right up your alley, that was he's the uh, sports psychologist for the Seahawks. Right. Yep. And a number of other organizations. Of course. Yeah, he's yeah. Got, he has some uh, pretty interesting stuff. All right, man. So what is your? Uh, so you're in Oregon. Um, Correct. How's the weather in Oregon? Well, wet. <laughs> right now it's winter, uh, so that just means a lot of rain. It doesn't get that cold though, so that's nice. Um, sometimes I'll just bring my barbell inside to you know save my hands a little bit but for the most part it's not that bad it doesn't get down to into the 20s all that often so 30s is relatively standard when i'm working out in the morning but 40s and 50s happens a lot too it just rains being from wisconsin the 30s is like shorts weather for you absolutely <laughs> <laughs> i've lost my my tolerance a little bit since i've been away from home for a while but yeah, it's not it's not bad. <laughs> when it snows like an inch and the city shuts down, I'm out there yeah. like flying around the streets, pulling my e-brake and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And that, you know, I'm starting to realize now having we need to get some more like international guests to truly get some comparison on weather. Oh, we have, we have a guy from Australia scheduled soon, but uh Ooh. the I feel like the only people who really have it bad temperature wise are you know that that midwest you know like wisconsin right. and minnesota michigan uh a lot of michigan yeah and north mm -hmm. i mean i'd love to talk to someone who lives in like northern north dakota and just see there's probably not a single garage gym athlete in this <laughs> state uh but yeah i hope not yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right man uh, uh, so what kind of a uh, equipment setup you have and uh are you actually in your garage or um how, how, how are you how are you training yeah, I actually do have it in my garage. Uh, it's kind of an extended garage, so I'm able to park in there too, which is pretty nice. Um, so I have basically just 
one ply board and then some horse stall mats, you know, next to that sort of a platform. I didn't go all out just yet to like build it with the double layers below that. But then I just have a, a rack, it's a half rack with some storage on there, a bench, barbell, some plates. I have a plyo box and then I sort of built some not they're not really jerk boxes but it's kind of like the same concept that i use when i'm cleaning heavy so just to save my grip a little bit and um then i have a trx and some some bands sounds like a pretty legit setup Solid. yeah it's not bad yeah and uh where did you like piece by piece craigslist rogue like where did you gather a lot of this equipment sure so it's been sort of a slow process over time i started out getting I think I found a deal on on Dix and got a, an ethos bar and some plates and then I bought some more just metal plates at Plate Against Sports so that was nice um, and then I've slowly expanded I've gotten a lot of stuff from Titan Fitness um, you know there's just pretty good quality at a good price and free shipping so that's been good and then I've got some more plates from uh, Kilo Flex it's out of Portland, Oregon. Um, so, you know, it's local. So I wanted to support them and just got some bumpers and that's where I got my, my plyo box. I've, uh, recently turned to, toward Titan because of their prices. Um, not off to a great start, but, uh, I still kind of like what they're they like, have to offer. They're like back ordered on his squat rack for a couple of weeks yeah. now. Yeah. I got, oh, I got half, I got half of the rack. I don't know how I didn't get uh, the other half. So I have, I have like the, the four corners and like the trees for the weights, but I don't have like the poles that connect it or the pull-up bar. So I'm like, hey, I just have these four poles on on the ground. <laughs> it's kind of an important part of that whole thing. <laughs> just <You> slightly. <laughs> I can't just like prop it up against the wall and then put the weight on and be like, okay, I can kind of use now. Man, I, yeah, I, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> if I was in that situation, I would probably have DIY'd some sort of cross beam. Been like, whatever, Titan, I'll I'll uh, I'll get back to whatever you want me to use once I can. Right. I right, mean, so why why start a garage gym? Yeah. So you know, I've kind of just uh, had really nice opportunities being in the military. You know, there's really good gyms mm -hmm. um, most of the time on base. Um, and then while I was working on my undergrad back here at Oregon State, <clears throat> I worked with the women's volleyball team, and as a part of that, I was able to work out in the athletes' gym. So that was an amazing. So I had, I really had absolutely everything that I needed. And then when I graduated, I started looking for something similar and it just doesn't exist. You know, any just normal global gym type setup doesn't have really what I'm looking for cuz I I sort of have the desire to have it be like a box kind of CrossFit setup while still being able to do some other athletic type stuff uh, with, you know, like uh, a ladder to work on some agility. And I forgot, I also have some battle ropes. I just got some battle ropes recently. They're terrible, but I love them. Um, <laughs> so really, you know, the, the decision to go for the garage gym was I can't really afford to do CrossFit right now. And if I just invest a little bit of money up front, it's basically going to be the cost of what it would be to do CrossFit for a year. And I can just do CrossFit or my own kind of training in my garage for the rest of my life. So it, it really made financial sense. And then it also fit with the type of training that I wanted to do. And in your type of training, what are some of your goals right now? I would definitely say that sport performance is something that I, I try to focus on because I, I still try and play basketball and football when I can. Um, and then even more than that, I would say I play a lot of volleyball. I, I compete in beach volleyball tournaments and things like that. Okay. And so that's a big part of what I train for. But then I would say probably even like bigger picture, just the general purpose of my training is to provide a, a really good example of a healthy lifestyle for my son and my wife is pregnant with our second child so you know that's put things in perspective really well for me when 
when my first was born, it just helped me sort of go down a path towards improving in so many different areas. So I started looking more into nutrition and fitness and just overall well-being. That's awesome, man. So how old are you have? One on the way, congratulations, and... Yeah, thank you. The How old is your other son, your son? He's about 20 months. Okay. So we'll have two under two for a minute. <laughs> yeah, for a minute. That, that's crazy, Oof. man. So your wife's due soon? Yes, she's due in April. Uh, my wife is due Coming in April. Fast. Yeah. Really? Yeah, my third, but yeah. Awesome, dude. Congrats. Thank you, thank you. So uh, actually, I have a question now, because you've been through the experience once now with... Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I don't know how it was for you. Uh, did did you was the sleep schedule pretty interrupted, or did you have a good sleeper? Like, what was your experience with uh, kid number one? He was actually a pretty good sleeper. He woke up many times throughout the night to be fed, but it wasn't really extended, so that was awesome. But I think it still had like a pretty crazy effect on me. Oh yeah, uh, and just the interruptions would make me do some pretty weird stuff and he, like I would randomly just be sitting up in bed sort of cradling a pillow or something and my <laughs> wife would wake up and look at me and be like what are you doing go to sleep I was like no I have to hold the baby he's like you're not holding the baby just go to sleep <laughs> that, that in a wide variety nice. of ways has happened I think that would be me so, yeah. Hopefully we don't experience that again, but <laughs> you know, I made it through it, so it'll yep. all be all right. <laughs> all right, so what's the what's the game plan going in for – I get this question all the time now that my, my wife is due, but what's your game plan going in for number number two? Are you going to change up the schedule so, or anything, or uh, how are you going to work it? For number two, I think it'll be about the same. The Number one, I should probably call him by name, so – yeah. Uh, my son. <laughs> I didn't know the name. That's why I, I referred. <laughs> right. My son's name. No, is I like number one and two. <laughs> <laughs> so with Theo, my wife feeding, so she was just pumping. So the setup there was she would go pump, and we already had milk, so I would just feed him, change him, and try and put him back down. And that sort of made us more efficient because mm -hmm. it wouldn't make sense for her to get up, feed him, then pump, and then try and go back to sleep while I'm just chilling. So now I think she's going to try and breastfeed with number two and we'll sort of see how that goes. But if not, you know, we'll, we'll try and again have about an even split and keep a relatively standard system. And I don't know how it's going to impact Theo. Like if he wakes up all the time when the baby wakes up, that's going to be a game changer for sure. And we'll have to figure that out. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's gonna be. Brutal. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah, I'm look. I'm I'm probably like in a peak state of optimal performance in all honesty right now, um, and that's about to get just trashed. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be. I don't know. I'm looking forward to it because I'm gonna track more than I normally track, or or maybe I'll just track nothing where it's not depressing. But uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll see. All right, man. So what, what, what were you doing <laughs> uh, before you were a garage gym athlete? So before this. You know, I've kind of had a lot of bad experiences with most of the gyms that I've like, actually signed up for. You know, when I try and use a standard gym, it's it's just always the same thing. It's it's really crowded in in January and maybe February, and then at those specific times when everybody's able to work out. So I've found that just trying to fit it into my schedule means if I want to do an hour workout, I probably have to budget for two hours to yeah. drive there, drive home, wait 10 minutes for somebody to be done curling in the squat rack and, you know, all those variables that I really don't have to worry about anymore. So I, I'm really happy that I made the, the change. Awesome, dude. And uh sounds like you have a pretty diverse <clears throat> background, athletic background, and been training for a while. So what is the hardest workout you've ever done? Ooh, that was a, a good question that took me a while to sort of come to a conclusion on. You know, this being in the military, random, like, injections of CrossFit into my stuff, 
I've had like different like classifications, I think, in for this question. So for me, for some reason, anytime you just mix running in with body weight stuff, like the EO3 5K, or yeah. you know, just doing laps and pull-ups and stuff, it makes the body weight training that isn't that hard so much harder. Like I'm not Murph. really sure what it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, and then there was a, a CrossFit wad that I did that had, I think, five strict press or push press, hang cleans, front squat, knees to elbows, burpees, and then I think maybe 50 step ups in the beginning or something like that. And you just had to do it for 10 rounds. So in those longer workouts, it's such a, it's challenging physically, but it's more challenging mentally to just keep yourself on pace and actually commit to pushing through. You're only doing like five reps of things. So it's easy to just like take a breather or pause for a second. And then with those 50 step ups, you, you really have to stay in it mentally just to get through it. So I would say that one's definitely up there. But my conclusion was the worst that I've ever done was burpee 28s. So it sort of broke it, the burpee down into four different sections. So, you know, you did sort of a, this probably isn't going to make sense because I'm not able to demonstrate, but, you know, you do sort of a push up and jump your knees up for seven reps. And then you do um, like a jump squat for seven reps and then a jump pull up. I should have mentioned their burpee pull ups. Uh, but then <laughs> you do the, you know, the whole thing for seven reps and just do as many rounds as you can. I think the goal is seven, but yeah, that. So, so breaking down a burpee pull up into each form that it is. So that's the, the ground and push up position, the jumping, the getting up yep. position, the jumping and the pull up position, all of those broken down to four, you said total. And then each of those you have to do seven times to, before Correct. you move to the next one. Right. Okay. Yeah. That sounds pretty, uh, pretty brutal. And that reminds me of, uh, we used to call them in the military, uh, bodybuilders. Do you guys remember those? I don't know. If oh I, yeah. 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 It so, counts. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> A lot like that. Awesome. That's great, dude. All right, man. Uh, in your opinion, what's the best activity for building mental toughness? Yeah, so, you know, with a lot of the guests you've had, they've come up with so many, just a really wide variety in how to answer this question. So I tried to rack my brain to come up with something kind of new. And so what I've got is, you know, you kind of have to disconnect your, from all the technology, the devices and things that we have, and then connect more with yourself. So I think anytime you can go without a cell phone, like try and just go through your day at work, even put it in a desk drawer um, or keep it in your bag, whatever you have to do to just resist sort of the temptation to check it all the time and you know i think that that will connect better with themselves which is a, a big piece of that mental toughness um you know and there's probably different levels that you can do maybe for an athlete somebody that's really used to training while listening to music or going for a long run or something and listening to music to sort of keep your mind off of what you're doing it's really difficult to just train in silence. Yeah. Um, you, you know, you can do it even riding in the car if you have a, a commute to work, which is a great time to listen to podcasts. But if you want to really challenge yourself, it's it's hard to experience silence. And then you have to focus a lot more on your thoughts and the things that are going on for you there. That's awesome, man. And that's uh, it's funny because what I – if I ever have like a, let's say, 8 to 12-hour road trip and I'm by myself, which happens periodically, uh, I will, I'll, I'll crush like podcasts and audiobooks for yeah. as long as I can, but I can't sustain it. My brain will eventually be like, no more information, <laughs> like mm -hmm. cannot. And then I'll, I will literally just sit there in silence and as long as I can to try and kind of process some of that information and like go through it. But uh, yeah, 
definitely a challenge, man. I think that's a, a good one. Yeah. All right, if you could only have one piece of equipment to train with for the rest of your life, what would it be? This one, I also tried to come up with something really creative, and I couldn't do it. So for me, it's a barbell. <laughs> barbell, awesome. There's man. so many things you can do with a barbell. That That's just what I would go for. I think uh, Max Shank will hold the most creative answer to that question for a long time. Is he the one who said another person? Yeah, yeah another person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't beat that, so I'll just uh, you know join the crew. Well, for so many reasons, like that's a. I mean, it's not technically equipment, but I allowed it on the podcast. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. No, but barbell, kettlebell, man, those are the, by far the the big winners um, in this sure. question. All right, yeah. Joe, you're up, man. If, if you had a uh, uh, a wish list for. Uh, the pieces of equipment that you want to add to your garage gym, what would be at the top of your wish list? No, no uh, cost. Uh, oh, actually, that's pretty easy. Um, I really want a rower. Yep. So the highest yeah. one. That's a that's a, that's a frequently <clears throat> requested one. All right, man. Yeah, absolutely. All right, what's the uh, best advice you have for all the garage gym athletes out there listening to this? Yeah. So one thing about working out in your garage and having access to your gym at all times, it's really easy to say out later. And then you just kind of fall out of a good routine. Usually in the gym, you have to fit it in. So you kind of schedule it into your day. Whereas being in the garage, you don't really have to. So I think if you kind of, you have to stick with it and find the routine or a schedule that works for you. So then you know, I'm going to the garage at this time, I'm going to work out and, and then that'll just make it a lot easier for you to stay consistent on the flip side though, because you have that and then life happens for so many people with young kids or job, whatever you stay busy, you have to be flexible with it too. So you have to find the balance between being really disciplined while also being flexible so that you can fit it in whenever you get a chance. Like for me, sometimes life gets crazy in the morning and I just have to rush my kid out the door, go drop him off and come back. And I don't have time to do a full hour workout. So, you know, I'll go for a run or just do the strength portion of my workout. And as long as I can fit it in, you know, that's, that's still way better than doing nothing. So while I'd like to be more scheduled and like committed to doing it at a certain time, I still, uh, I try to stay flexible and know that getting that workout in, even if it's 20 minutes for lifting or just doing a quick wad, it, it's, it's still helping me get to my goals. Okay. So you're saying, uh, if you can be as regimented as possible, but allow that element of flexibility because life happens and absolutely yeah and i think that's that's really important because i it, it worked out more for me i think when yeah when i didn't have uh i don't know maybe uh, maybe i was just younger i don't really know why 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 it matters now but yeah when it if i ever like got busy in the morning or something and try to push it to the evening i would typically still get it in but there would be more frequently more frequent times where I'm like, I missed it in the morning and then at night something else happens and then it's just like, well, now it's not happening at all, you know, right. and uh, that's always unfortunate. But there are, one thing I've been uh, hounding on a lot of people is to, to like screw everything being perfect, you know, like kind of what you're saying with that, be flexible and get it in like, all right, if you yep. got half a workout, great, get, get half the workout. If you're doing it in your jeans and like work shoes, but that's the fastest you could get in there and the, like do it, you know, however you can get it yeah. done. Uh, as long as you're safe, you know, I think that's, that's right. great advice. All right, man. It's been a, a great time having you on the podcast. Joe, you have any other questions? No, I'm cool. All right, man. Well, uh, All right. We, we appreciate your time. Uh, thanks for being on the show. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me.